Welcome to the second part of the lecture on displacement and deformation. Quantities such as particle position, velocity, or density can be expressed in different coordinate systems. One is Lagrangian or material or reference coordinate. As you can see here, it is attached to initial state which is called undeformed configuration. Unit vectors are capital I. Quantities are defined with respect to capital X, initial configuration, and they're shown by capital letters, like capital V for velocity expressed in reference coordinate, or, cap uh, or capital uh, rho, for density expressed in a reference coordinate. Alternatively, we can define them in Eulerian or a special coordinate. This coordinate is attached to and moving with material, as you can see here. It is called current or deformed configuration. The unit vectors are I, the quantities are defined with respect to x, current uh, position, and uh, they're shown by lowercase letters. For example, v for the velocity expressed um, with respect to current position, or rho for density expressed with respect to current position. You see the difference between these two coordinate systems here. Well, any body property can be defined with respect to material or a special coordinate. We use uppercase letters for quantities defined in material frame and lowercase letters for one defined in special frame, as I said earlier. Um, so it's uh, easy to conclude that at time uh, zero, initial special frame is equal to uh, the uh, current material frame. So at time zero, these two frames um, uh, coincide and align. But as uh, the time proceeds and the material, the um, body deforms and moves, these two uh, starts deviating and moving apart. So in summary, we can define uh, the properties either with respect to initial coordinate uh, system attached to the body undeformed uh, configuration, or we can define them with respect to a deforming, moving, and changing coordinate system, which is attached to the deforming body and moving with it. Um, and here you can see that um, the uh, initial special frame is equal to the material frame for time equal to zero. Uh, just note the difference between lowercase x, capital um, x, and the mapping function between them. Okay. Uh, based on that, we can uh, define uh, two different viewpoints to approach uh, solving problems of continuum mechanics. Uh, we call them Lagrangian and Eulerian viewpoints. Lagrangian frame uh, is defined with respect to capital X, initial position. As you can see here, for a rigid, uh, for a solid, or, uh, as you can see here, for a fluid particle on a streamline. In the Lagrangian frame, the observer follows the individual particle in motion through space and time. As you can see for this uh, fluid particle, uh, there's a frame attached to it, and we follow that particle through space and time. For a solid deformation, it's, 
basically defining everything in the material frame uh, because in solid deformation we don't have that obvious movement of the particles uh, the uh, materials stay uh, relatively uh, close enough uh, together um, so uh, it doesn't really mean uh, following the the material but uh, the meaning of a Lagrangian frame is um, expressing everything in the material frame but in terms of fluid it means uh, looking at the particle moving with it uh, through time and space for example the trajectory of a particle can be described by a series of velocity vectors for the particle as it moves to different positions throughout time uh, everything in the Lagrangian frame is with respect to capital X and shown with capital uh, letters here for example capital V it basically chronicles a time history of the particle for each particle of the body for Eulerian frame uh, we uh, define everything with respect to lowercase x the current uh, configuration or the current position of the particles for a solid it's basically uh, attaching the frame to the uh, current deformed state of the particle and moving with the particle and defining all of the properties with respect to x in a special frame but for a fluid as you can see here it means uh, staying at a certain location in space and looking at the uh, particles that's moving um, inside and then outside of that stationary uh, frame so for fluids the Lagrangian um, viewpoint follows a particle but the Eulerian viewpoint states stationary at a, a location in space and uh, considers uh, the motion of particles through that stationary um, frame uh, so it basically the observer focuses on events taking place at a specific points in a space as time passes for example the trajectory of particle can be described by a series of velocity vectors at a specific position x and time t um, since everything is described in a special frame uh, they're shown by lowercase letters for example velocity uh, in this case is v as a function of x the current configuration and you see that in Eulerian uh, viewpoint we define the uh, velocity field for um, each location that describes the motion of the uh, particles but in the Lagrangian viewpoint we follow the particle so we know the velocity of a specific particle as it moves through time and space we usually um, use a uh, Eulerian uh, viewpoint uh, for um, rigid material but Lagrangian frame uh, viewpoint uh, for fluids uh, gases and rigid material as well uh, but the difference is not that distinguishable uh, for rigid material it's more distinguishable for um, uh, for um, fluid and gases as you see in these uh, two uh, uh, diagrams um, so uh, Eulerian frame focuses on the history of the properties in a specific a special location okay uh, let's define uh, concepts of body deformation and displacement field uh, we already know that we have a reference and we have a current uh, state for a body the reference is the undeformed case and the current is after it deformed and moved in space body deformation is change of configuration from reference to current configuration for rigid body displacement uh, which is rotation or or translation there is no change in size or shape 
It's just changing the position and orientation. Uh, but in the case of deformation, we have the change in size or shape. We define a displacement field, U. It basically describes transition of all part particles in a body from reference configuration X, uh, capital X, to current one X, as you see here. And it's simply defined as U equal X minus capital X as you can see here. The displacement field can be described in material frame, for example, based on reference particle coordinates, capital X. So we show it by capital U equal to X as a function of capital X minus capital X. And U is defined in the uh, reference frame cap uh, with, uh, with unit vectors capital I. Um, U can be described in a special frame as well, uh, which is based on current particle coordinate x. In that case, U as a function of x is equal to x minus capital X as a function of x. Uh, U in a special frame is um, defined with respect to uh, special frame unit vectors I. Um, we, can, uh, we can show that the time derivative of displacement field is uh, the velocity v. It's basically an alternative definition for the velocity v. Uh, the reason for that is capital X is the initial position of all the points. Uh, so it's independent of time. It doesn't change. The initial position doesn't change with the, with the time. So uh, the time derivative of that uh, term is zero. So basically du dt is equal to uh, dx dt, uh, which is the velocity. Okay, let's uh, do uh, an example. Uh, it says obtain the uh, displacement field in both a special U and material capital U descriptions for different types of displacements presented here. Let's start with rigid body translation. We have x1 equal to x1 plus a constant, x2 e equal to capital X2 plus a constant. Uh, we know that capital U is x as a function of capital X minus x. And also we know that we can find capital X as a function of x. So U is equal to x minus capital X as a function of x. Capital U is in uh, the reference frame and u is in uh, the current or a special frame okay for the rigid body translation u1 is basically um, x as a function of capital x minus capital x so u1 is 5 u2 is 2 um, to find the inverse map, we can simply find capital X equal to X1 minus 5 and capital X2 equal to X2 minus 2. So U in a, a special frame is uh, this, ter this relation minus X1, um, sorry, X1 minus uh, capital X1 as a function of uh, X, which gives us 5. Uh, for u1 and 2 for u2. For rigid body rotation, uh, capital U is easily found by um, deducing capital X from these relations. Uh, so uh, only the term, uh, the coefficient for x1 and x2 gets a minus 1. Then uh, the inverse uh, map can be, f it's a rotation. So the inverse map is basically the transpose of uh, the uh, coefficient matrix. We can easily uh, find it as uh, it is written here. Uh, so U in a special frame is easily uh, X minus capital X as a function of X, which um, can be found here. Uh, can be found here. So uh, the, the only coefficients uh, that are 
different uh, are the coefficients of x1 and x2, which are basically 1 minus, uh, you get a 1 minus there. Um, if I want to explain it a little bit more, you can simply, I can simply say that it is uh, u1 is equal to x1 minus x1 as a function of x. Okay, finally for a stretch, uh, x1 is a coefficient multiplied by capital X1, and x2 is again a coefficient multiplied by capital X2, so as a result the body stretches. Uh, you don't see any deform, any uh, displacement or any rotation here. Capital U in the reference frame is easily defined as um, X1 minus capital uh, X1. So you get uh, X1 for U1, uh, capital X1 for capital U1, and half of capital X2 for capital U2. The inverse map is easily found. Based on the relation that we have here, uh, so a U displacement field in a special frame uh, is again from uh, this relation can be easily found as U1 equal to half of X1 and U2 one third of X2. Here's another example. It says uh, obtain the displacement field in both a special U and material capital U description for the following motion. Um, the the um, current uh, position is given as a function of uh, the initial position. So we have X as a function of capital X. So we can easily find capital U as X as a function of capital X minus capital X. So U1 is um, uh, basically capital X1 plus capital X2 multiplied by E to the power of T minus 1. U2 is found the same way and u3 is 0. For uh, u in uh, a special or in current frame, we need to find the inverse map for capital X as a function of x. Uh, we already know that x3 uh, is equal to capital X3, so uh, substituting it in this relation, we can find capital X 1 as a function of x1 and x3. Substituting it in the second relation, we can find capital x2 as a function of x2 and x3. And we already know that x3 is equal to capital x3. Um, the first relation can be simplified as this relation. Okay, now we have uh, capital x as a function of x. So u in a special frame is x minus capital x as a function of x which is simply uh, gives us u1 equal to x1 plus x3 multiplied by 1 minus e to the power of minus t u2 is equal to x3 multiplied by e to the power of t minus e to the power of minus t and u3 becomes zero again that's the solution okay uh, here's a final uh, example for you to work on before starting the third part of this lecture. Uh, it's basically similar to the first example that we went through. It says for different uh, displacement fields presented here, find a special U and material, capital U, uh, um, deformation, um, deformation fields. Uh, we have pure shear case. Uh, we have shear with rotation and we have a general deformation in this case. Good luck with it.